the close-up. I, I was looking for a play that would spill off that huge stage into the auditorium that would be completely theatre-filling. And I think we are doing a play that needs that space. There's a lot in the play that's comic, brilliantly, wonderfully comic. Joe was very much the leading part in Love's Labour's Last, you know, a man who, the whole joke is, he absolutely can't stop talking. <laughs> and here we are, Cyrano de Bergerac, it's a man so who can't stop talking. You discover all traits of personality with great classical text, and I would put this down as great classical text. You, you get the DNA, the profile of the person through the choice of words. The play has enjoyed uh, immense popularity since it was first written. It is a great romance. Everything about Cyrano is qualified to be the person with the girl other than this monstrous nose. But what I love about that is we all have varying degrees, whether it's physical or mental, we all have these fears within us. His fear is that he'll be laughed at. It's partly a kind of satire about men. He's the one to ridicule him, himself first in order to take the sting out of anyone else ridiculing him. And yet there is extraordinary wit, soul and panache, and an ability to rise above all circumstances. What he cannot bear is corruption, hypocrisy, pretension, falsity. He does become a kind of Cape Crusader. Um, he does become somebody who wants to put the world to rights. There's that ingredient that I think does fascinate audiences, and therefore Cyrano has become one of the great characters. They would imagine that Rostock completely invented this character and made up the story. Well, it's not so. There was an actual historical documentary, Cyrano de Bergerac, a great duelist, a great swordsman. He was also a poet and a playwright. But I think there's a great deal, um, even though he is sort of superhuman in many ways, there's a, there's a great deal for an audience to identify with, or certainly for me.